How many of you had the opportunity to go trick-or-treating this past Monday night? Did anybody? What's going on? You guys aren't too old to trick-or-treat. <laughs> Tuesday night. Some of you, I didn't go out Monday night because Halloween was Tuesday. Why would I do that? You want to make sure to get all the candy before everybody else. But maybe you remember back in the day taking your kids trick-or-treating. Maybe you saw people trick-or-treating. Uh, we had the opportunity to trick-or-treat at Venetian Gardens, and it was packed as all get out. It was. But maybe uh, growing up, you did this as a kid. Um, after you trick-or-treated, you came home, and I'm going to show you this picture. Maybe this was you back in the day when you trick-or-treated. Did you do this? <laughs> See, back in the day, you didn't have a chance to brag on your candy collection, but maybe you came home and you spread out all your candy. Maybe you separated it by each candy bar. Did anybody ever do that? Yes. My kids literally will come home. They will come home and they'll do this. They'll come home and they will seriously, they'll count like, all right, let me do this. These are how many uh, Kit Kats I have. And they'll put the number over here, 13 Kit Kats. And then we'll talk about these are going to dad, okay? <laughs> then they'll go number two, they'll go Reese's. Anybody like Reese's? Yeah. And they'll put three. And they'll put those are going to mom, okay? And they'll go on and on. They'll list how many they got. And then we have three girls, so then the girls will begin to fight over, you know, who gets what. Hey, I don't want Jolly Ranchers. You want Jolly Ranchers. And they will begin to count their candy. And I want to tell you this. I know it's funny, like kids count things, they count candy, but we all count something. We all count something. What do I mean by that? Many of you are counting the days until Christmas. My Thanksgiving people are getting mad at me again. You're counting the days until Christmas. There are 50 days until Christmas. 50. Some of you, that just got you all excited. Others of you are like, you just skipped over Thanksgiving again. Many of you count how many days until vacation. Some of you are counting days until retirement, right? Some of you, let's go. Some of you are counting days until you get married. You can remember that day when you were counting days until you got married. Some of you are counting your days until your birthday. But we will all count something. And my question for you this morning is this, are you counting your blessings? My message title this morning is this, what are you counting? What are you counting? Because you woke up counting something. You maybe woke up counting your burdens instead of your blessings. Maybe you woke up this morning and you're like, ah, I should have slept in. Maybe not. Maybe some of you are like, I have to go to church instead of I get to go to church. You were counting something. Did you wake up counting your blessings or counting your burdens? Which one is it? Because the more we count our blessings, the less we will complain. I don't know if you woke up and you began to complain or not, but what would have happened if you shifted your perspective, shifted your attitude, and you started counting your blessings? I want to read a couple of stats to you that I found were fascinating. Here's one stat. It says 90% of doctor's visits are stress-related. 90%. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and the number one cause of office stress is coworkers, and here it is, they're complaining. 90%. I didn't come up with this. They did, 90%. Let 
So I want us to do something about it this morning. This is what you're going to go away with. A gratitude list. A gratitude list. I want you to implement this every single day of your life. We're in this brand new series called Greater Gratitude. And what would happen, what would happen if you woke up and you had gratitude for your day? Gratitude for your salvation. Gratitude that you woke up another day. Gratitude that his mercies are new this morning. Gratitude for the family that you woke up to. Gratitude for the kids that you have. Gratitude for the car that you were able to drive in here. How would your perspective change if you counted your blessings and you were more grateful for the things that God has given you this morning? Here's another stat. Negativity costs the U.S. economy 250 to 300 billion every year in lost productivity. Just think about that for a second. Think about the billions of dollars that are wasted because we are complaining instead of being grateful. Because when we complain, we feed negativity. When we complain, we feed negativity. What are you feeding this morning? Are you feeding gratefulness or are you feeding negativity? We're feeding something. This is what I know to be true of each and every one of you because it's true of me. I don't have to tell you to complain. I don't have to, because complaining comes naturally. Complaining comes naturally, therefore, our gratefulness must be intentional. If complaining comes naturally, because each and every one of us are sinners like me, and if that is natural for each and every one of us, gratefulness must be intentional. Like, you don't wake up and you're like, man, I am so grateful today. This is just amazing. Like you woke up and you're like, oh man, somebody get the kids up. Who wants to make the coffee? I got to go to work today. Man, my body doesn't work how it used to work. Like I didn't have to tell you to wake up like that, but we have to be intentional to be grateful. Like complaining is going to be natural. Therefore, we must make gratefulness intentional. We must. What would happen tomorrow if you woke up, you took a lap around the block, you woke up, you went to a quiet place and spent time with Jesus, and one of the things that you did, you sat down and you counted your blessings. You got out your gratitude list and you begin to be grateful for the things that God has given you. Not just in the month of November, but every single day of the year. If you have your copy of God's word with you this morning and you didn't forget it and you're well rested, if you could go with me to the book of Philippians. Philippians, I'm going to be in chapter 2, verse 14. This verse is not going to be anything earth shattering. Maybe many of you grew up having to memorize this verse like I did. That was in my house growing up. But I think my question for you is, are we going to implement it? Because I said this before, even on a Sunday morning, information plus application equals transformation. When we begin to apply God's word, that's where the transformation is going to take place in our lives. I'm going to read six short words for you this morning. Here it is. Do everything without complaining or arguing. I'll read it again. Do everything without complaining and arguing. How how many of you this morning know a complainer? Hey, don't point at your spouse. I didn't tell you to do that. We, we all know a complainer, right? 
we all know a complainer. You're going to have an opportunity when you leave here to get brunch, maybe a little bit later to get lunch. You're going to have an opportunity to complain or not when you sit down for lunch. And I think my question for you, does it do you any good? The other day I left for lunch to one of our favorite spots, Tropical Cafe Smoothie, or Tropical Smoothie Cafe, however you want to say it. I always say it either way. We sat down for lunch. We get one of our flatbreads. I ordered a wrap. Sit there for 15 minutes. 15 minutes goes by after they made our smoothies, the flatbread. And I knew the manager because I go in there a lot. And I said, Kayla, I said, I think you guys might have forgotten my rap. But I knew I was going to be preaching on this. So God always like makes me put it into practice. <laughs> so I'm sitting there at this table with my wife. And I said, Chrissy, you know, I'm about to preach on no complaining. And I, I captured the thought in my head. And any other day, I probably would have been like, I can't believe, how can they forget my rap? Like, what's taking them so long? It's just a rap. This is supposed to be a fast food place. I would have gone on and on and on and on. But would it have done me any good? See, what it would have done is it would put me in a bad mood. It would put her in a bad mood. And it literally would have achieved absolutely nothing. So I said, hey, Kayla, you forgot my rap. Full of grace, though. She comes to the table. I kid you not. She comes to the table. She puts down a wrap and she's like, I know I see you guys a lot, but here's a card for a buy one, get one free coupon. I didn't complain. I didn't say anything. And if many of you know me, I would have been like, Hey, what, what are you going to throw in free now? Are you going to discount? Am I getting this free now? <laughs> Some of you are pointing fingers again. You know it. But he doesn't give us any inkling, any reason for us to complain. It doesn't matter if your food is taking longer. It doesn't matter if they messed up your food. It doesn't matter how rude the waitress might have been, the waiter might have been. He doesn't give us any cause to complain. He says do everything without complaining or arguing. Now we need to look at the context of this verse. We need to look at the context of this verse because who is writing this verse? Who's writing it? Paul, my Bible scholars in here who haven't fallen asleep, they're well rested. <laughs> Paul is writing this. And if there's anybody who could have found a reason to complain, it would have been Paul. So I'm here to tell you, just like you can find a reason to complain, you can find a reason to be grateful. You can find a reason to be grateful. I can find a reason to be grateful in that situation when they haven't brought my food to me. I can. Complaining is a choice that you don't have to make. Complaining is a choice that you don't have to make. It doesn't matter who you are. But some of you are like, hey, okay, you don't know who I am, but some of you might have this reason. You don't know the cards that I've been dealt, the environment that I grew up in. Hey, you don't know how I'm surrounded. Listen, I got a cause to complain. Okay, let's not only look at who is writing this, let's look at where he is writing this from. Because the book of Philippians was written from where? Prison. Paul had every reason to complain, not only through everything that he went through, but where he is writing this passage from right now, he has every reason to complain. He's in prison. He has a million reasons to complain the environment that he is in right now. Can you do me a favor? I need some participation. I want to keep you all awake. If your birthday is in the month of... November, can you stand for me? Birthdays in the month of November. Okay. A lot of November birthdays. I see you, turkeys. I see you. <laughs> if, if your birthday is this week, remain standing. Okay. If your birthday is 
tomorrow it remains standing. Wow, Jake, it's your birthday tomorrow? It is? Can you do me a favor and can you run down here real quickly? I want to give you a gift card. Can you do that? You have to hurry. You're killing my preaching time. Come on. <laughs> hurry. I'm going to leave it down in the front of the stage so I can continue to ramble. All right? I'm going to leave it right there. Jake, happy early birthday. Didn't even know that. Give him a hand. Give him a hand. Give him a hand. If your birthday is in the month of December, can you please stand? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. But some of you are complaining because the cards that you've been dealt. Some of you begin to complain, I wish my birthday was in November. <laughs> I would have had a chance to get a gift card this morning. Some of you have been dealt with cards that I know nothing about. You didn't do anything to cause that, but those are the cards that you've been dealt. And you're like, Hux, I have a reason to complain. I'm here to tell you, no, you don't. You don't, because it's not gonna do you any good. He says, do everything without complaining or arguing. I love, this is one of my favorite quotes of all time by Charles Spurgeon. This is what he says. He says, as long as a man is alive and out of hell, he doesn't have any cause to complain. <laughs> Am I right though? Is he right though? As long as Jesus has rescued you and saved you from your sins, you don't have any reason to complain. That's your greatest need this morning, by the way. If you're here for the very first time and you're seeking out that void in your life, you need a relationship with Jesus. Because you can complain about a million different things, but if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, that's the biggest thing that you're missing. Biggest thing. But as long as we are alive and out of hell, we don't have any cause to complain. But some of you are like, you don't know the times I'm living in. Have you seen gas prices lately? They coming down. They're coming down. They're below $3. I swear it's political. Anyway, not going to get into it. Not going to get into it. Some of you are like, you don't know when I go to Aldi, because I got to go to Aldi. I can't afford Publix. It's still expensive. Maybe you're like me. I really had to do some soul searching. I was like, man, there's a lot of things I complain about. Because the other day I was waking up, I was complaining about the prices of food. I was complaining about the prices of gas. I was complaining about the weather. Because we used to live in Greenville, South Carolina, and we woke up and some were like, man, it was a little bit cold. I'm like, no, it was like below freezing when they woke up. But can you change the prices of gas by complaining? Can you change the prices of food by complaining? Can you complain? Can you change the weather by complaining? So has it done you any good? That's what I realized. I was like, man, I, like I'm complaining. And I hadn't changed anything. The only thing I changed is my attitude. That's it. See, someone said this, I complained because I had no shoes until I met a man who had no feet. I complained that I had no shoes until I met a man who had no feet. Let me ask you this. Are you complaining about some things right now in your life that there's maybe people all around you who are praying for? Maybe you've complained about your spouse this week and there's a lot of people maybe around you who wish their spouse was still around. They wish they had a spouse. I could go on and on. Maybe you've been complaining about your kids, which is easy for me to do. And instead of me being grateful for the kids that God has given me, there's people who are begging God for a kid. 
maybe some of you are complaining about something that happened in your house this past week that was out of your control, that maybe broke, and there's people wishing they had a house. Maybe some of you could experience trouble with your car, and instead of being grateful for the car that God has given you, you complained about it. Do everything without complaining or arguing. See, a complaint, sometimes it's a solution that hasn't been thought out. Some of you in the work environment, yeah, I get it, there's complaints, but a complaint is a solution that hasn't been thought out. See, some of you in the workplace can tell your employees, listen, I'm fine with you bringing me your complaints as long as they're attached to solutions. As long as they're attached to solutions. There's even solutions in the life of the church that maybe, listen, y'all found out pretty quickly that we're not the perfect church. Hate to spoil that to you. We're not the perfect church. And maybe over the last several weeks you've had a complaint. Listen, we would love for you to bring us a solution. Maybe we would love for you to be a part of the solution because what we're trying to do our best job in doing is reaching this world for Jesus. Do everything without complaining or arguing. Some of you are like, you haven't talked about arguing. You know what arguing is? It's complaining that's been spilled out into a conversation. Arguing is complaining that's been spilled out into a conversation. See, we must never complain about something unless we're willing to do something about it ourselves. Right? And many of you know. When you begin to see someone complain about something, maybe ask them, hey, what are you willing to do about it? What are you willing to do about it? Because I thought about bringing a rose up here. And a lot of times we see the thorns and we don't see the rose. And complaining focuses on the problem rather than the solution. What are we focusing on? What are you focusing on? What did you focus on this morning? Did you focus on all the blessings, all the gratefulness? Did you count every single one of your blessings that God has given you? Because this past week, listen, some of you are like, Hux, you're going to tell us to fill out this gratitude list. And I filled one out. Filled it out. I began to put it at the top of the list. This is what I begin to put at the top of the list. You ready? Here's first and foremost. Maybe you can put the top of your list when you go home. Is you can put your salvation on here. Maybe the next one you want to put on there, if you don't want to sleep in the doghouse, is your wife. But I began to put on here, man, let me thank God for the church that he allows me to be a part of, the people I get to serve with. And man, as I took a walk around the block this morning and began to count my blessings, the difference that it made in my life. But I want to end with this. By asking us this question, why is complaining like such a big deal? Because I know that's what you guys are thinking right now. Hawks, you don't complain. And you're thinking, man, Hawks, tell me why it's such a big deal, man. It's not that big of a deal. Well, I'm glad... You were thinking of that question. Can we go down to verse 15? Let's go down to verse 15. This is what it says. So that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God. Here it is. Shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. I'm going to read it one more time. So that no one will criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God. This is what I want to focus on, the ending right here. Shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. This is how I want to end this morning. They're going to dim the lights for a second. Don't fall asleep. This is what I want you to do. For those of you who have your phone by you this morning, can you do this for me? You take out your phone. 
Can you turn on your flashlight for me? You have your phone, turn on your flashlight. We're just practicing for Christmas Eve right now. <laughs> just want to drain your battery for a second. <clears throat> Let me ask you this question as you see these lights around. What kind of attitude is going to light up this world? What kind of attitude is going to light up this world? A positive one, right? One that does everything without complaining or arguing. See, how can we be a light in this dark world if we're constantly complaining? How can we be a light? We're called to be that city on a hill. We're called to be the light of the world. We're called to reflect Jesus in everything that we do. We're called to imitate him. We are called to be the light of the world. But this is what happens. This is what I want you to do. If you have it all this week complained about the gas, the weather, you name it. I want you to just cover up your light for a second. Can you cover it up? Can you cover it up? There's still some lights out. Still some lights up. Maybe you've complained about anything. Let me just say that real quickly. If you've complained about anything. Man, where'd our light go? Where'd our light go? See, complaining turns our lights out. That's why it's such a big deal. How are they gonna see Jesus? If we're too busy complaining... Listen, complaining is natural. Therefore, gratefulness must be intentional because when we begin to be grateful, all right, you can take your hand off of your flashlight. May we'll be able to light up this world. We'll be able to impact our neighbors. We'll be able to impact our community like never before because we're gonna be a light in this perverse, crooked world. We'll be able to shine among them like stars in the sky. Listen, imagine the difference you could make if you establish the no complaining rule that Jesus implemented. No matter who you are, no matter your situation you've been dealt with, you don't have a reason to complain. So can I encourage you to do everything, everything, not just some things, but everything without complaining or arguing then we're gonna make a difference. We're gonna light up this world for Jesus. We're gonna shine like stars in the sky. Can I encourage you this week to implement, to put into practice the word of God? Because you ready? This is what I'm gonna end with. There are two types of people, those that whine and those that shine. Which one will you be? Are you gonna be that person that whines? Are you gonna be that person that shines? Because when we do everything without complaining or arguing, we shine, we don't whine. So can I encourage you this morning to wake up, to put into practice your gratitude list, to count your blessings, to practice thankfulness, not just in the month of November, but every single day that you wake up and you will shine like stars among them. Let me pray. Jesus, this morning, we're grateful. We're grateful for our salvation. We're grateful for the fact that you chose to leave a perfect world to come down to this earth to die on a cross for each and every one of our sins. Jesus, I pray that we never get over that fact. God, but I pray that we would just take a second and we would begin one by one to count every single blessing, every single gratefulness. Maybe right now, God, as we sit here with our heads bowed and eyes closed, maybe we've been nitpicky of our spouses. And we just need to say, Jesus, thank you for the spouse that you've given me. 
Maybe we've been nitpicky when it comes to our kids. God, I don't know what it is that we're being nitpicky about, that we're complaining about, but Jesus, we wanna develop attitudes of gratefulness, of greater gratitude. God, I pray you would just change us. I pray that we would practice your word day in and day out. But God, maybe this morning, there's someone here who can't say, hey, God, I just wanna be grateful for my salvation. God, I pray today would be the day of salvation. That they run from their sin, they run to you. God, I pray would be the day that they surrender their life to you. so that they can be eternally grateful. God, what we want most to do is shine like stars in the sky in a world that desperately needs you. God, I thank you for what you're gonna do this morning. Pray all these things in the name of Jesus, amen.